Hey Bob, what's on the project list for today? Sill plates. These sill plates were used on Chrysler products 1960 through 1964. There's no difference year to year. These have never been reproduced by any of the uh, vendors in our hobby system. There's been lots of talk and I believe there have been efforts made, but no one has successfully ever made new sill plates for the 1960 through 64. I say that because in 65 the sill plates are entirely different and there is now a vendor with new sill plates for those years. But let's just talk about 60 to 64. What can you do? Well, as you can see, I've got a collection of them from over the years. And I'll show you which ones you can discard without even trying to work on. And I'll show you what I do to bring them up to reasonable presentation. So here's a reasonable pair. And if you'll notice, this one has a cutout on this end. Your, your three crowns. This one would be a passenger side. You can see the cutout here, three crowns. This is the driver's side. This cutout is for the, um, what do we call that? The, the, the round lacing that comes up and uh, joins into the rear seat panel. I'll give you a picture of that here in a second. So here's a cruddy pair. I've seen worse, but what you want to look for is this sort of edge corrosion. Now this is where the, they meet the carpet. And over the years, the carpet will hold water, the water will start the corrosion, and this edge can get eaten away. This isn't horrible, because you do have the carpet to help hide it. And if you have nothing better, well, then this is what you've got to use. But that's one area to look at. Yeah, you can see corrosion along the other side. Not terribly bad, but, you know, and in a pinch, I might use it. And here's one with a very good edge. There you go, there's some corrosion there. You'd also look for distortion on the, the holes there. See the size of that hole? And it's the, um, the screw has been... That hole has been enlarged because of the screw that somebody used in the past. Of course, one of the things to look for is uh, bends and dips, as you can see along the edge of this. And of course, it's a sill plate, so it's had a hard life. And you, you just got to expect 
Uh, a lot of scratches along them. Some of the scratches we can work out, some of them we can't. Here's a sill plate installed. We're looking at a 64 Chrysler passenger side. The light's not very good in here, but maybe the reflection won't bother us. There, you can see how the cutout is for this quarter welting, round welting. I don't know what you call it. And there is an extension that runs off of the sill plate to the back seat, as you can see here. You can polish up that extension the same way that we're going to do the sill plate. These extensions are different, 63, 64, as opposed to 60, 61, and 2. Let me say that 60, 61, and 2, these extensions are the same. They are shorter than what was used in 63 and 4 because the back seat <coughs> was redesigned and there is more back seat room in a 63 and 4. <coughs> so the sill plate extension is longer. This is a 65 sill plate you can see it is much different than the previous years. I've decided these are the four I'm going to work on. And the first thing, let's get these two into the soap and water and get them a scrubbing, get the dirt off of them. Well, 10 minutes with a scrub brush was well spent as far as uh, evaluating these two sill plates. This one uh, had debris on it that um, took mineral spirits and steel wool to get, to get off of it. So I was surprised uh, how much cleaning it required. This one had a disappointment. You see right here, I thought that was just a tar spot or some sort of grease. But, you can see the corrosion that's on the underside of that. That corrosion is coming right through. Well, I gotta admit, it's a hard life to be a sill plate, but these two don't have a lot of potential. My notes say that I got this from out west. So it's uh, spent most of its life in a corrosion-free environment. And boy, look at the underside. This is how you want to find them. I've already washed this and it's come up pretty good. It's hard to see with this direct light, but eh, there's going to be lots of foot scratches on this thing and they're not going to come out unless I was to break out the sandpaper and and I'm not going to do that so my next step is going to be to buff this and see how the results are well here's the passenger side cleaned up as good as I can. Invest time in cleaning, getting the dirt off of it because our next step is buffing and you can't buff dirt. So 
So a word or two about buffers. <coughs> this is the pedal still mounted type and it's, uh, it's a pretty good one. This one runs at 1800 RPM and you can put the different kind of buffs on it. I'm not going to use this one for the sill plate. Mainly because this likes to throw a lot of dust and debris and buffing is a, a dirty um, process. So I much prefer uh, having the sill plate securely mounted on my workbench and then just taking a drill mounted um, buffing wheel and doing it that way, which I'll show you now. And this is how I'm going to buff it. I think I got this wheel from Eastwood. And I probably had to make up the arbor. And I'm using the stainless steel compound. I would imagine these plates are aluminum, but uh, the stainless steel seems to work very good and they don't make a compound for aluminum Generally you use the stainless steel compound on anything metallic and well, it works And here's the result after only five minutes with the buffer you can see What I've done and what I haven't done One thing about using a buffer, yeah, it likes to grab the part and throw it. That's another reason why I'm not using the pedestal buffer. I'm also wearing uh, respiratory protection because this thing does throw up buffing compound and it makes, makes some dust. If I didn't say it earlier, sill plates for a two-door are longer than the four-door. So this whole treatise that I've done today applies to coupes and convertibles 60 to 64 Chrysler. There, two hours and it's done. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. And it'll look good in the car until we get new ones. Two hours invested. Sure, why not? The uh, screws. You can get the correct um, screws from, I think it's Gary Gore's. Or maybe it's Restoration Specialties. Anyway, um, you can get the right screws so that you've got everything matching. Uh, the standard notes about buffing is uh, keep your work moving. You don't want to generate too much heat because then you can actually burn the section you're working on, turning it blue. I've never been able to get the blue out of it. So, you know, uh, a consistent touch but keep it moving and of course keep your buff clean and your compound clean because you can't buff dirt. And there you go. Takes maybe an hour and a half for each plate. By the way, for the 55 and 56, you can get new, beautiful sill plates from John Coat. For the 57, 8, and 9, you can get new, beautiful sill plates from Michael Burke. Uh, this assortment 
is the sill plate extensions that uh, go off the back and uh, go between the, the sill plate and the rear seat. They corrode and get junky just like the sill plate but same sort of buffing and you can get these back into shape. These are the short style. They're not too hard to find. They fit 60 through 62. 63 and 4 as I said were longer. I gotta look up the, the number.